Hello, my name is Alexander Moore. I'm the executive director of EFA, the European flavor industry. We are based here in Brussels and taking care of the flavor industry in Europe. And I give a short presentation about the policymakers and if they are the trendsetters, a little provocative, or maybe the macro trendsetters in the current uh, policy environment. So here we go. Um, we we choose the title to uh, bring a little bit forward the 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 idea that the policymakers here on EU level, but very often also member state level, are actually setting so-called macro trends, uh, at least with a question mark. That it's not so sometimes not only driven by the consumers, but also by the very policymakers who have some ideas. So, and with this, we try to explore this a little bit in this presentation, and we hope you find this interesting. Um, I give a very short overview over who we are, what we do here in Brussels, and then, uh, which might uh, many have already heard about, the so called EU Green Deal, and uh, the role of policymakers in this, and what the plans are, and of course, what is the value of us as EFA, as a European association in this setup, and how can we provide the necessary information to the policymakers. Very shortly about EFA, as you can see, 12 national associations presenting over 300 SMEs here in Europe. And then we have 11 companies, members, a lot of familiar names here. All the big companies are, of course, member of EFA. And here on the map, you see basically all the headquarters of our national associations. Why do I highlight this? The main reason is that national associations are extremely important when it comes to our advocacy. That means we have the information and very often early, early warning uh, systems about developments in the national member states. So for us, as a European association, this is extremely important. And also, uh, we have the company sites, which then again are also members, of course, on the national level where they are operating. So for us, from an advocacy point of view, as a trade association, this is a very good setup, a very healthy setup, and um, I'm always highlighting the SMEs. For us, this is an extremely uh, important backbone of our industry, and we always make sure we have a very um, open ear to the concerns and the, the challenges the SMEs are facing in the member states. So, uh, a rough overview over the flavor industry in Europe. I just want to highlight. Um, are two or three um, facts. One of them, on a global scale, Europe has 30% uh, market share. And, and this is very interesting, four out of the five big global players are based in Europe. So this makes EFA, of course, an, an extremely uh, important go-to source and player. And then 70% of the, especially the SMEs, are family businesses which have a much, very often, uh, a, a very long, um, I would say, outlook, uh, a generation outlook on how business is conducted, very interesting. And um, we are very happy to have this very diverse membership with over, yeah, 400 production sites, and I already mentioned 300 SMEs in Europe alone. So this brings us to the, to the topic of this presentation, the EU Green Deal. And before I go into this, this table on the right, I would like to highlight what, what I've written underneath, an ambitious plan that touches every aspect of economy, society. So independent from the flavor industry and therefore as a B2B or the food and drink industry in Europe, it touches on all sectors and industries here in Europe. So it's an extremely ambitious plan. And for us, the um, farm to fork, which you see here in the blue circle, is of course the most important or the centerpiece for us is where we are um, where we are looking at. And what you see here, the subtitle is a fair, healthy, and environmentally friendly food system. This is already touching on three huge topics for the food and drink industry. It's all now captured in this farm to fork strategy. Um, we are seeing this as a very huge challenge as a B2B association here in Brussels. We are working very closely with our customer associations, of course, and with other associations, stakeholders in the Brussels environment. And last but not least, and here uh, the headline right in the middle, 
transforming the EU's economy for a sustainable future. And if you go to the bottom, EU as a global leader, and then there is climate change that should be tackled as well. So a lot of topics, a lot of societal topics linked with industrial topics. For us, uh, a very huge challenge to handle this. It's an, I would call it an avalanche of, of initiatives um, that we have to, where we have to position ourselves and where we have to provide the necessary input. So what does this all mean? Why the EU Green Deal is, is so important for us? Basically, because it's going to fundamentally change the way we produce and we consume food in Europe. At least that is the plan of the European Commission. They do not want to, like in the past, very often single out a, an issue and then um, make a public consultation on it and, and make a draft proposal. This is different. This is an initiative which is actually trying to be holistic in its approach. And it's gonna, the, the aim really is to fundamentally change how we eat and drink, to say it in a very short form. So what, is, what are the two elements of this farm and fork strategy or the two sub-objectives, if you want to say? One is promoting and the other one is reversing. So promoting a more plant-based diet, okay, going a little bit away from, from meat products. And on the other hand, reversing, and this is linked to health, meaning at the moment we have an, an overweight and obesity of, of 50% in Europe is, is overweight. And I think we are sharing this uh, not only in Europe and in the single European member states, but this is a trend in all Western worlds. So there is an, there is a, the, the initiative is also focusing on health aspects of food and to reduce overweight and obesity. If you, if you take away something of that presentation, one, two, three figures, I think please take away 2030 reduction of hazardous pesticides by 50% and the second number one quarter or 25% of farmland shall be under organic farming. Right now, we are slightly under 10% of organic farming farmland used. So if you combine these two figures, 50% reduction by 2030, which is basically, we have already 2022, so it's around the corner, and from under 10% to 25% um, for organic, farm, uh, organic farming using the farmland, you already have a fundamental change in how we produce with all the effects on the market and the consumers and price. So a few examples of this very dry topic of legislative actions on, on EU level in the context of the so-called Farm to Fork initiative, which I just mentioned. So there are um, initiatives launched all year round, basically. And here um, to mention one is an uh, initiative regarding the maximum levels of certain nutrition that the European Commission wants to tackle. Then there is a restrict promotion of food high in salt, sugars and or fat. I would like to highlight this very much indeed, because some might remember that marketing and promotion of food in the context, for example, um, in, in sports events can have a huge impact also on the, on the, on the financing of, of sport. Um, here, the commission really is going, is, is looking into this very carefully, how, how, how food uh, products for consumers are marketed and, and try to maybe looking up to that can be restricted. This is a, a huge thing. And then there's, of course, a front of pack nutrition labeling. This is a trend which is with us for the last, I would say, 10 years, 20 years, maybe even. Um, it's about um, health conscious food choices to, to, to give the consumers more information front of pack nutrition labeling. And this is not a voluntary initiative. This shall be mandatory. Another huge step where it comes for food and uh, drink products uh, linked directly to the consumer. Okay. Then, what does this mean in consequence? And I think I already, I already uh, mentioned it or hinted it. So right now, we already have a trend in Europe about organic products. I think everybody of us can see that if you go to a supermarket, organic or so-called bio products are, are very prominent. Um, also, plant-based products uh, came into the market and have a, a, a big growth rates 
Then there's a reduction of uh, reduction of sugar, salt, and fat. I just mentioned it, and all this gonna lead, maybe most likely, to an exponential growth in those segments. Um, we said exponential growth also again to be a little bit uh, provocative and straightforward. We already see a trend, and we believe it's gonna accelerate much more. So what are we as EFA, as a European Trade Association, doing in this context? The EC has set up a so-called advisory group on sustainability of food systems, a very uh, long name, but an extremely important forum where you have to apply to become a member, where you have to make your case to become a member of this forum. What it helps us is we have very early access we have the possibility to anticipate already in which direction is a um, initiative or a, a broader policy uh, environment going. We have a privileged forum, meaning we are sitting there with the public authorities. We can discuss here with customer and consumer association and all the actor actors that are involved. And we are part of shaping the future globally in the sense of that very often policies on EU level have kind of a lighthouse uh, um, uh, function, meaning the trends, the policy trends that are established on EU level and sometimes are then getting into law, coming into force, um, are also then sometimes seen their, um, their mirror developments in other regions in Latin America, in the US, in Asia. So what is happening on EU level, I cannot I cannot highlight this enough, very often sets a kind of indirectly a standard also in other regions. So watch very carefully what's happening in this advisory group and um, be very much aware that it might not end here, it might then go further in other regions in the world. I want to end this presentation also on a slightly higher note. We are very of course, we are, it's a big challenge for us also as a trade association, it's a big challenge for our members. But we want to continue to advocate the rule of flavors in this process and being less defensive, but actually actively um, accompanying the process. So for us, taste is the first driver of choice when choosing a food product. I think we are sharing this with the consumers and you see here we're using at the source, the Eurobarometer. It's very clear that the consumers um, are when they're choosing a food and drink product, are always looking for what tastes good for them. We are investing as an industry 10% in research and development. That's a very a number we are very proud of. It's a very innovative industry and a very looking for trends industry. What 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 does the consumer wants to have as 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 the next uh, experience? And here we are we are investing a lot. Um, it's something we are very uh, proud of. When we had last year a so-called Flavor Day where we're bringing together our members, policymakers, um, our customers, um, we also invited somebody from the Commission to, to discuss with her how she is seeing these uh, developments and, and how she is how she sees taste in this whole debate. Well, what role does it play? Um, how how can we how can we come together and and I'm, I'm not reading out here the whole uh, statement that you can see but what is extremely interesting is that actually the European Commission recognizes the fact if something doesn't taste good you can you can it, it will not work so the consumer and taste will will always be in the center of the European Commission is doing. And I very strongly believe that the flavor industry can play here a, a, a very positive role in the process. Um, I'm very happy that the Commission actually recognized this um, and that it is important uh, beside all have these, these trends, these macro policy trends that you do not forget that at the end of the day, the food and drink has to taste good and the consumer should be in the center of this. Um, so this is uh, on a lighter note, uh, I believe uh, EFA can play here a role, that's why we are in this adversary group and we are uh, very happy to contribute in this process to the European Commission. And with this I would like to thank you very much for your time, I hope it was interesting. You saw the initial title was 
are policy makers uh, trend makers? Um, maybe they are. I think they're setting a trend environment in which then things can maybe further develop. But we should not always look into into uh, what what we believe what the next trends could be. We should always look at what the policymakers, not only in Europe but also in other regions, are planning to do, and which role we, as a trade association, can play here, and how we can contribute to the process and highlight maybe also the advantages of our industry. Thank you very much.